there's a lab in New Mexico that mm -hmm. created what what one journalist started calling zombie cells, and you know how that works in the media. Yeah. The term kind of takes off. And the interesting thing, this was written by my editor, David Freeman. Yeah, and we've got it up here. HuffPost Science zombie cells created in New Mexico labs said to outperform living ones in some ways. Yeah, and so we were trying to really understand and wrap our heads around what are these cells, and, and David reached out to the lead researcher, Brian... Care, I think is how you would say his name. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm and he reached out. These zombie cells under an electron microscope. Yes. This, this is what some of these zombies. And they had a conversation, and he said to him, like, is zombie really the right word to use? And he was like, of course, you know, somebody in the media first used that word, but in some ways it may be the correct word to use. Because basically what they're doing is they're taking living cells and they are um, adding silica to them to, to kind of reinforce the scaffolding of the cell. So you get the 3D structure. It's the same shape and size as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And then through some kind of heat processes, they're able to take away all of the protein. So now this cell's no longer living, but they can use it kind of as a, as a nano material to do all sorts of different things that they always need nanomaterials to do. The issue like is... Like what? What sort of things? Um, there were some things listed like choo -choo 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 -choo, sensors, like biosensors, catalysts to fuel cells, all sorts of things that you need, something very small that's very hard to build. Yeah. Right? So a 3D structure is very hard to put together when we're talking on the nano scale, right? Right. So, and lots of times yeah, what happens... Yeah, because this must be so fiddly. Like, they're that, teeny that... tiny. And so a lot of times... What, I love fiddly. That's what they are. Uh, <laughs> what happens is that let's say they need something that's the shape of a red blood cell because it would be a good delivery system for some form of medicine. Well, instead of trying to build something that's the shape of a red blood cell... They take a red blood cell and turn it into something. Wow. That's what they're doing. And that's why they're calling them zombie cells, because they're not alive anymore. They've kind of been taken from a living state and made into this very rough and tumble scaffolding mm -hmm. that can carry out these different processes. But the cool thing is they actually have some somewhat better traits. Like these cellular zombies are actually hard to get rid of. Uh, uh, see, okay, I that kind of freaks me out a bit because doesn't that mean? I mean, can they create what sort of things can they create that don't worry, they're dangerous? They're, they're or, not alive, okay, which means that they don't have minds of their own and they're not gonna take over your body. They, they can't like bite my neck or anything, they can't, like um, they can't replicate. So okay. that's the important thing. They're you know, whatever we make, that's all that there's going to be. They can't self replicate. The coolest thing um, I like about this is that, um, Dr. Jeffrey Bink, uh, Brinker, mm -hmm. a University of New Mexico professor and a member of the research team, said in the statement that the zombie cells exist in the three dimensional state, which you said, but it resist shrinkage even upon heating to over 500 degrees centigrade, 930 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind yep. of, that's kind of crazy. The, he says, the refractoriness, mm -hmm. I love that word, the refractoriness of these delicate structures is amazing. So it's really a way to reinforce a cellular structure and then use it for some sort of industrial need, whether it's medicine, whether it's fuel cells, whatever. A very, very, very tiny thing. Nature through evolution, through all of these different biological processes, built a little machine that works really well, so why don't we commandeer that machine and use it for our purposes?